What's up everybody, Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net and if you can tell behind me by some of the trees in the background here, you can tell that I'm not in Pelham, New Hampshire, especially at the end of January because I have shorts on, short sleeve shirt, got palm trees, got all types of stuff growing in the background here. Uh, if you couldn't figure out where I am, the legendary front wheel drive GM capital of Florida. It's where they all come to retire. And I have a few retirement presents here myself. Behind me, Mr. Big Al from Big Al's Bike and Auto. It's my boss. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere we go, we're, we're, we're matching, we're twins. Got to represent. So I came down here. Uh, how long would I buy this car? November? For around Thanksgiving. At the latest, October, November, yeah. So I bought a car that was totaled out down here in Florida. Not a Hurricane Ian car, but very close to the area. It was a Naples car. Uh, it's got... A little it, flavor to it's it. It's a little flavorful, yeah. A little, little barbecue flavor. <laughs> so in true uh, Big Al front-wheel drive fashion, he said, if you're going to buy a car and you're going to abandon it on my property, Anthony... You have to buy a front wheel drive car. It needs to be the right wheel drive. It needs to be the right wheel drive. Although, we might have him slowly converting. Maybe. He's got a little surprise out there, but we I, won't talk about that one right yet. now. Not yet. Uh, but this <laughs> is my front wheel drive project. Now, if you know me, you know I've had one of these. Uh, and it's not just a Cadillac DeVille. Uh, you can see here we got some craziness going on with the cloth top. That's not your typical uh, canvas roof. You come down here, you can see Coach Builders Limited. So this car was converted um, like the Eldorado that I sold last summer. Uh, this car was converted by Coach Builders to be a four-door convertible. And if some of you creep on my website, you'll know in my personal inventory that I have one of these uh, DeVille convertibles or in my case, a DTS that I bought for my father a few years ago. I actually had one like this, the old body style DeVille, uh, but then I traded up to the newer DTS style. This is a 2004 Cadillac DeVille DHS. So top trim car, Naples car its whole life. You can see it's beautiful on the outside DeVoe, here. DeVoe Cadillac. DeVoe Cadillac. It's got the beautiful DHS wheels, beautiful Michelin tires. Uh, you can see on the front here, she's got your typical Copart tramp stamp. So I breezed over this part of the windshield where you can see fire damage. And fire damage it is. You can see the windows are a little tinted on the inside, and that's not a natural tint. I'm going to open these rear doors up, and you can see... We have a little bit of uh, ash slash fire damage on the inside of this car. Oof. Boy, that stinks in there, huh? Woo! I thought it was just you. No, nope, I showered this morning. <laughs> yeah, this, this car, so this car was a burn car. Um, I still don't know what happened to it. You come around the driver's side, that's where the big burn is. Yeah. New inventory. New inventory coming soon. Hut sale. Obviously, the big burn area is this driver's seat. Um, I don't know if we had cheap taco Tuesday or what happened here. I'm not trying not to touch anything until I put gloves on. But essentially, something under this seat, I don't know, a module or something burned up in this car. How much did I pay for this car? 450 bucks. It was $450 plus the auction fee. So it was like $750 out the door for this custom convertible. So I figured there's nothing I can lose. We don't really know what we should do first. Should we toss a battery on it, try to put this top down? You know, this is kind of looking a little suspect back here. It doesn't look melted, but it looks kind of effed up a little bit. And it almost looks like the fire kind of like snuck out this door i don't know i didn't even see that before yeah 
Uh, oh, you know what? That might have been where the door panel was hanging out over the the threshold. Look, they've got the they've got the quick connects off for the for the fuel, fuel. lines. I wonder yeah. why they'd have that. Maybe with the fire, they yeah, they were gonna probably pull them. I wonder if that was a fire department that would do something like that. Just noticed that now. Yeah, probably a good thing we noticed that. Burn the car up again. You know what's kind of weird? The key and the key fob look perfect. You know, the, the car probably wasn't running when this happened. But the weird thing that I would have thought is if it burned while the car was unattended, I mean, if that seat caught like that, I would have thought the whole inside of this car would have just. Yeah, but let me tell you, because you know I've got that fire trophy. Yeah. It was unattended. Yeah. It gets starved of oxygen. Oh. Because okay. the doors and windows are up. Sure. Because my dash caught on fire overnight. Yeah. About the same size fire as that, but it starved. Interesting. So that's probably what happened. That could have been what's happened. Yeah. All right. This is either going to blow up in my face. Oh, <laughs> we're going to start to see smoke coming out of something. We're going to put positive. Positives attached. This is a hot battery, right? Yeah. You got a draw. You have a fire extinguisher? I got one. Somewhere. Yeah, power things. One works. Did you yeah. press that or is that the car? No, I pressed it. Oh, okay, scared the hell out of me. We don't have any ignition. No power there. It's weird. Horn works. Lights work. Yep. So. How about the windows? Um, I'm not getting any. Yeah, there's no power. Why not have any power to your BCM? Yeah. It's weird to get a trunk light. Okay. Nothing started smoldering yet. You might have a lot of blown out fuses, fuses and relays yeah, from thinking. that fire. I might have just, you know. Let's, uh, we'll dive through that fuse box. I think there's another fuse box in the I was hoping it was just going to start. <laughs> I kind of thought it would, to be honest. A after we had. You know what? No way. It's trying. There it goes. Now watch this one blow up. If your ignition's not working because the steering wheel had a fire of some sort, maybe it, maybe it burned up the ignition wires, and you just get no signal from the key when you turn it, and so it's not sending power to everything else. That might be it, because you get all your stuff that doesn't rely on the ignition. It probably sound like Darth Vader in this thing. I don't even know where the BCM is in this car. I'm gonna have to do some Googling. Yeah. I feel like that might be, that looks like a BCM right there. Sure. Yeah, there's some. With that blue connector, kind of looks like a BCM. Holy, look at this. We can reuse the seat. Um, Maybe not the Coley. <laughs> Holy shit. I wonder what happened to this one. That, that must maybe they had they have a trickle charge maybe they had it on a trickle charge or something and it just it's weird no interior lights well, that's a function of the bcm what did i get myself into here all right let's start google digging we'll become youtube google mechanics to try to 
make this a little easier, we're gonna put the top down. The top doesn't work by key on. Uh, it seems like the key isn't getting any signal to come on it. Everything else seems to come on. Headlights, horn works, um, mirrors do not work. That seat works over there. Uh, telescoping wheel works. That doesn't work, so it's kind of a little skewy, but uh, in the trunk here, I opened up the latches on the roof. The We gotta figure out what's under that seat. So, with a little bit of research, we've figured out what these computers were, at least. Uh, basically, looks to be all related to power seat. So, we're wondering if something here, obviously shorted, melted, burned, but now that we have power going to it, it probably blew a fuse in the back seat under the hood. So we're gonna try to unplug these things here um, and try to stop popping through those fuses and see what we can find. But, oh man, this is a mess under here. Well, you wanna disconnect that battery before you start touching that stuff? Yeah, that's probably a good idea, right? Might be able to save the carpet in this thing. Hey, by the way, your battery's got 11 volts, so it's still good. It was just low enough that it didn't have enough juice. Huh. But, uh... Well, we didn't try any power. Oh, we never, yeah, we never reconnected it. So that, Oh, it, it yeah, was, you know what, it's disconnected. It was disconnected when we got the car. Disconnected. Uh, yeah. A lot easier said than done, right? Uh, so you get a couple things going on under the seat here, and I kind of unplug. Mostly everything. We have a couple main connectors here. Um, this goes right here, and this module here. There's two plugs going into the same module. Flip that over. I'm gonna get a part number off that. See what that was. But that looks like it where it burned the most because you can see here the indentation. Uh, this guy is the fan. Uh, for the forced hot and cold air seats. And then over here you have one more that's completely disconnected. Um, I don't know if it's a Motorola, I don't know what that is. But essentially I should have everything unplugged from this seat. This goes to the plug, or for the uh, switch I should say. All these are unplugged. Those are just going into the individual motors. So now I'm going to see if I can test. Some of these fuses to see if we can get power back to whatever power is this. Because really, still don't know how many miles. Actually, I wonder if there's an uh, oil change sticker on this car. Uh, I don't know if that says... 10,000? No, it said it's got 14,000 miles. 14,000 miles? It can't be. No, this must be 40,000 miles. I got everything unplugged. Kind of at a stop where we're trying to figure out why are we not getting any signal when the key is turned. And we're not. Oh, Big Al thinks here. And I agree, it's the next. Kind of the next point is to. Big Al's looking at this and like, oh, okay, okay, okay. No, I'm very optimistic. <laughs> I, th I, th I think you've got to pull the uh, the cover off the, the steering column and take a look because there is some burning on the steering wheel or melted, you know, the... Plastic, yeah. So I'd be curious to see if anything with the ignition switch melted. It's just not this getting any juice. What we got here. Because the fuses and the it relays for the melted. ignition are good. And there wasn't a key in here, but... You know, something could have melted. You see that melting right there? Something could have melted in there. And we took out the two T 
don't know if this thing just pops off. Oof, this thing is... This thing is melted to shit. Oh, yeah, there we go. It doesn't look very melty in there, but... So, we got this thing all torn apart. The covering. And there's absolutely no melted wires in there. Uh, I'll go around the other side. Show you the same over here. There's nothing really melted. I mean, it's kind of a little distorted. So, kind of drawing a blank. Um... Again, we still don't have access to a Tech 2 scanner. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more research on the fuse box on this car. I had one blown ignition fuse that uh, I replaced. It was a 10 amp fuse. When I originally started with power to the car, I had some things working, like the headlights, the horn, etc., um, as I was pulling fuses and trying them out, more things started working, but I didn't find any more bad blown fuses. So what our problem was, was we didn't have power to the ignition. Anything ignition related would not come on. So Al and I went through this fuse box for, it got to be what, the third, fourth time? Yeah, we, we put a multimeter and we really started checking fuses out of the car, we found that some were intermittently working sure. on the multimeter. So we just went ahead and got a whole bunch of new fuses and relays. And Popped them in. We don't know. Again, with the fire, maybe the heat was... Everything looks okay. It, I don't know. We don't really know exactly why they were being intermittent, but we replaced the ones that were intermittent, and now we're going to see what it does. Well, we also found out that there was still power to that driver's seat, remember? Oh, yeah, we, and that's in the, the video now. Yeah. So who, I get it. it what was causing that, we don't know. We put new fuses in, and uh, we're going to see what it does. All right, let's see if we can kick this. Truth. Moment of truth. Uh, we got door lights. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, cluster. All right, what's the odometer? 37. I can't see anything. It's so I can cloudy. 37,527 miles. This is going to stop. Anthony, the cluster didn't work before, as you know. What Why is your, your, your blinker on? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, oh. that wasn't working before either. Service. Oh, okay. Let's, uh, ready? Fire in the hole. Watch for fire back there. Oh, we got climbing and everything. Hey, your, re your rear climate came on too. Hey, you know what? Pop the hood. Uh, okay, let me open the hood first. So if we do get it to start, we can, uh, you know, you can hear all the What was the mileage over there? 37,500. 37, I was off wow. 500 miles. Yeah, we were trying to figure out what the mileage was because this oil change sticker it says 40. says 40, do it 40 in 2018. All right. I believe you're driving, maybe 500 miles if it's a 3K interval. Whoa! <laughs> it's an empty, not a what? tick, not a knock. Sounds perfect. Listen to it. This thing probably hasn't ran in how long? Yeah, usually they got a little skip to them. Nothing. Zip. I mean, you can balance a, a penny on this. How smooth is that running? Wow. Oh my. Hey, let's go see how the. Uh... Oh, we forgot to reconnect those uh, fuel. Hoses? Oh, all right, shut it down. Yeah, gee whiz. Here's a good way to burn the car up again. Well, here, you can show. They just, they popped off. There's oh. still, there's still a second step. Yeah, right? oh, yeah, if yeah. You, you gotta use a tool to pop those out, so this is... I wonder is... why somebody would've taken these off. Fire department, maybe? Yeah, they would've probably just cut them, no? I don't, well, look. There's that. I guess we probably should've looked to see why. Well, if there was anything else going on in here, we will monitor it. I got a fire extinguisher somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Specialty motor cars can pay for my house if it burns down. Just put me in a nice brome, we'll call it even. Yeah. But really, I'd rather have a, a nice baby lack. How does this pop up? It. Oh, I, I think, think I haven't had one in a few years. Just lift it, right? Oh. Yeah, it's got the clean as a whistle. Oh, look. Oh, never mind. I thought there was, uh, it's just missing the little, little screw thing there. Make sure there's, make sure everything looks good with the fuel rail. You know what I mean? 
All right, your fuel pressure right, so regulator's right. hooked up. All your injectors are, that's just from the beauty cover. Dude, this doesn't even leak any oil. I mean, for a North Star, kick it over. Kick it over, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it. Still can't sit. Anthony, I, I just, I, got, I can't stress it enough. Not a tick, not a knock. You, an engine that hasn't ran in months, you sure. expect something. Nothing. <laughs> what the heck just happened? What do we got? A dead low battery now? Sounds like it's a quick play. So it started back up well, with a jump well, pack. The booster. The battery. Right. I, I checked the battery with my multimeter. It was at 11 volts. The battery okay. is weak. And at first it started, we thought, we needed to start it up. Yeah. Sure. Fuse? No, you get power to the radio. Air conditioning works. Yeah, compressor kicked right on. Nothing on the radio. Could it be that, um, could it be like an anti-theft thing? Because we put a battery in it, that maybe it's like locking out the radio? It's no, getting, it would show theft lock. No, it's getting power. Right. We got, we figured out the radio situation. <coughs> We oh, just didn't that put, was another fuse. We forgot to put the fuse in. Yeah. That was it. Took it out, didn't put it back in. We AC have works. <laughs> air conditioning. Nice smoky air. Actually, yeah, no, no, this is probably it. fine. Air works. So we got an airbag light because, for obvious reasons, um, TPMS light. I think that went out. All the windows now work. I think you should reward yourself with a treat. Yeah, those don't look too bad, actually. Pamela's. Blueberry lemon. Whoever had this car had money. So those got to be good snacks. Oh, yeah. That's that's not Winn-Dixie snacks. That's Toll Foods. For sure. This is probably... Uh, like except it expires. Oh, no. It's good still. Come on, man. You got to eat it for the camera. All right. You have one. I'll have one. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Wow. She, bring the camera back to the tailpipe and show them how well it runs. There is yeah. not a putt putt, nothing. It's nothing. so smooth. And, and it's been that way from the moment it started. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, it would have it tossed a service engine soon light or something by now. I don't even have a check engine light. Yeah. That's a good point. Only North Star Cadillac to come out of Copod for under $1,000 to start, run, and. Not have a check engine light. Oh, yeah, I'm forgetting about a nice SRX over there of mine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did have a check engine light when I got it for a nasty vacuum leak. That was a free fix. Wow. I, I, I need to go find a, a coin because I think you could actually balance it on here. It's that smooth. So it's got to be 10 o'clock now. Are we driving it tonight or tomorrow? Tonight. Tonight. Let's, let's, get, it, <laughs> let's get it clean enough. To sit in it, and uh, I, I, I'm not going to be able to sleep. I want to know how this thing got this out of our parts car that we have out back, which is an identical twin DHS, DHS perforated leather. Like brand new used. Yeah, I mean, if you, you call them. like a Craigslist ad, you step back far enough and use a crappy enough camera, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know what happened. And I mean, we, we wiped down this door panel, not even, you know, that well, and it cleaned right up, right, Anthony? Yeah. Heated steering wheel don't work. Temperature works. It already got heated up quite a bit. Yeah. She's ready for a maiden voyage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brakes are a little rusty, as one would expect. Oh yeah, you can hear those. But those should clean up. What's this thing got? 37,527. Now it's just as foggy 
in front of me. It's not that the camera's distorted. It's, I don't know if smoke got into the lens here. I can kind of still feel something on there. But we're cruising, we're moving. Doing 40. Humidity out here is crazy. Big Al test drive. Look at that. We got the convertible top, palm tree in the background. That's the Florida life right there. <laughs> drives like a dream, man. Awesome. Runs like a dream, drives like a dream. Brakes cleaned up. Yeah, they feel great. I mean, it's, you know, they just had a lot of corrosion on from sitting around. You're going to need a drop top. DHS or DeVille convertible. I love it, man. I love it. How much? Let's get it inside first. Yeah, right. <laughs> this fucking thing runs so nice. <laughs> That's 750 bucks I spent. And here she is. Not quite done, not quite finished. But as you saw last night in the excitement, we took her out for a spin. Just brought her down the street for a little shakedown to give Big Al that convertible feel in a four-door Cadillac DeVille that never was, per se, a convertible. Uh, so now I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. Uh, it needs more cleaning. Uh, we, we tried to, we attempted to clean it last we night. We thought, you know, at night it looked like we got it really clean, and then we woke up this morning and it came out. We're like, oh, yeah. You it's know. still, it's still, I mean, we knew still some work to do the detail part, but we wiped down seats and stuff and came back out and it's still dingy and grimy and it needs a good deep cleaning. And but the smell is pretty much gone. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, now that we let it air out for a couple of days with the roof open. You know, it's, it's not you offensive. You guys saw me with the mask. I mean, now I'll get in it and ride around. Sure. So. Seat. It's just sitting in here, so obviously I have to finish that, but now at least it's drivable. You know, I couldn't really ship this car back with the seat like that because one, it wouldn't start and drive, and two, who's going to sit in there to steer it? Um, you know, giving it a wipe down last night, you can see, you know, we, we got a lot of soot off. We actually forgot to do that door panel. Right. Yeah, you got a little before and after. But, I mean, in the event that this stuff does not clean up the, as good as we want it to, we've got the parts car. The parts car, which is you know? identical interior. This is... That's what this seat came out of. And you, you can and see the, you can like see the match, match here, but all this cloth stuff I'm gonna have to take out, clean, visors. I'm gonna have to replace the steering wheel, the column cover, all this stuff in here uh, that's just grossly you know, burned or discolored. Uh, steering wheel is discolored, but we're sitting right at 37,532 miles. Well, uh, like a champ, can't even hear it running. Can't even hear a North Star running. In, Oh, really the only warning light that we have is the airbag because that one is disconnected but i think the parts car is going to be needed you know you see stuff like this here where it's just the corrosion takes over uh even on like the door handle here um it's... these plating you know plated parts the chrome i don't know if it's from the fire from extinguishing the fire or what or i, I don't know i don't know what causes that i'm not a a sort of reaction in the air, you know, with sure. the fire and the something like that. Because my my tornado that caught on fire did the same thing. Yeah, you know, corrosion all over everything. Don't know what we're gonna do. Are we gonna drive this car back? Obviously not this trip. I have a round trip ticket, so I am gonna be flying back this afternoon. Um, maybe Papa Bear and I will come down, and drive it back, load it up with some parts that we got. I'm not sure. Comment hot ride. You want Anthony and Papa Bear to drive this car home? That would be a hot ride. She does we seem to know. We need feedback. We need I feedback. I want them to drive it home. Well, I want to enjoy it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't comment too quickly, right? <laughs> so there you have it. Seven hundred fifty dollars co-part by saved from a certain probably extinction. I. There you have it. Comment down below. Let us know what you think. Thanks everybody for watching. Check out Big Al's channel. There's a link down in the description below. Hit that subscribe button over on his channel as well. Uh, he gets weekly content all, all the time. All co-part stuff. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll talk to you on the next one.